Hello, everybody. Let's have a great week. Hi, Ziggy, everyone who's here. How are you? Welcome to FACE. I'm Dale Pinker. Great to be with you. I want to just go over a few things, review what I said last week and what's setting up here this week. <clears throat> last week I talked about that we uh, would have some type of bear market rally in Euro Pound to shake out some of the bears before we get this breakdown that everyone's looking for, the head and shoulders at 84. So we have the beginnings of it here. I tweeted this out last night. We had a classic three drive, one, two, three on the 15 minute. Very nice divergence, had a nice run up, uh, up out of here for about 40 pips, 35 pips. I still don't think it's ready yet because I need that type of look on a one hour TF. And a one hour TF, the RSI was 23 down here. So I'd like to see a retest of these lows in the coming days for outright long positions in Euro Pound. You don't have to agree with me, hi Ziggy. Uh, just give me a while if you understand the analysis in Euro Pound here. So it's beginning to shape up. Uh, the shorter term time frames are starting to uh, look like there's something developing. Uh, actually, I think that there's a chance from a low or bottom that takes hold that we could rally all the way back up to 86.20, 86, which would take out a lot of shorts. We take out buy stops here. We take out buy stops here. We take out buy stops here. And then old support around this 86 will become new resistance for the next wave down. And I think we could have a breakdown from there. So everyone with me on my analysis of Euro Pound. We're getting closer. Four hours starting to diverge. It already did diverge, but the one hour may give us one more shot down. Keep in mind, Europe is closed today. So not all the adults are participating. Easter is in, uh, they celebrate Easter in Europe today. So uh, not all the adults, black boxes, quants are in the game today. So you have to take today's action with a little bit of a grain of salt. Everyone with me? So I'm looking at that. Uh, Rega stuff agrees with it. But what I really want to talk about is the yen. Okay. And I don't know how many listen to Blake's uh, look, look at the week ahead. Anyone look at it? Hi, Kevin. How are you? And he's talking about the Euro Yen. I want to start off straight again. He also talked about the levels the Yen was at. I want to talk about the Yen here. So 108 was a long talked about target in the Yen. Uh, I have nothing here on the four hour. If you can see, we're still, the RSI reading down here is still under 30 at 24 on the four hour. In the one hour, we had a little divergence, but it's, there's still a possibility that we test these lows one more time in the next couple days to set up a buying opportunity. So am I a, a, a screaming, raging bull? Uh, not yet, but I could make the case that from these lows here in the end, why can't we have a bear market rally that takes us back towards 112? Okay, 112, something like that, maybe 113. Uh, to me, I can't get bullish until I see closes over 114. So right now, I'm just looking for a, a little bit of a short squeeze. Also, uh, this lines up with what Grega is seeing in the S&P. He's saying that this is a potential fourth wave in the S&P right here. And we could get bounces here. And uh, if that's the case, the end's the, lynch, the linchpin. Yeah, Dan. Did hey, good morning, Dan. Hey, Blake, how are you, my friend? How's good, it going? Man. Good. I, I, you know what? I'm going to let you do your thing, but I'm going to. I, I wanted to, you know, obviously talk a little bit about the market this week. Um, okay. In a bit. I want to. I, I want to hear it. All right. Well, well, go ahead and <laughs> and and uh, and and I'll, I just want to let you know I am here. Okay, bro. Okay, Blake is in the house. 
He's always in the house. His wife lets him leave once in a while with the kids <laughs> to go for a nice drive, and they live a nice life. But I tell you, normally I'm not. I'm used to doing this alone. What a, a great asset it is to have the team pop in and share their views. So uh, Greg is looking for some type. This is a way forward that implies another move up towards 2,400 or above. I've seen a lot of other Elliotticians saying the same. So what does this mean if this count is correct? Does this mean that U.S. dollar yen is going to keep going down? I don't think so. It means that uh, risk on would occur and we're due for a rally in the yen. So that's another piece of the puzzle. Uh, the other piece of the puzzle is that's when things will get challenging for the precious metals. Uh, when we get a yen lift, if you understand that correlation, give me a Y. And there's also, uh, I'm sure Blake's going to talk about it, uh, there's Gartley patterns developing. Uh, Nick pointed it out a few weeks ago, and there are Gartley patterns developing here on the Euro Yen. Actually, the uh, Guppy has a little better look to me, but I would love to see one more shot down in Euro Yen. Um, Lake's allowing for another move under 115 on the Gartley, but we'll see when he gets to us. And if you're a yen trader, this is what you have to start to follow. Okay, you have, it's a must. It's a must. It's like trading currencies without looking at the dollar index. You have to pay attention to the TLT. Okay, here's the election. Okay, everyone see where my cursor is on the election here? Give me why. This is a 20-year ETF on bonds. So here was the election. We had a huge gap down on the Trump victory, right? And this low was the last Fed hike. And this was about at 118 yen as well. And the yen, as the yen came off, treasuries began to rally. Yields came down. Hey, Baki, good to see your handle in here. Uh, my contention is before the yen break is done, I still think there's a chance we fill the gap. Okay, so you got to watch the treasuries as treasury prices go up and yields drop. That's bearish U.S. dollar yen. And when we're uh, heading down and yields uh, heading up, that's positive for U.S. dollar yen. That's risk on. And before, I just want to cover one more thing. Uh, and then I'm going to turn it over to Blake. And I want to just, I want you just to consider a couple of views here in the end. Okay. So a lot of people are looking at this yen and they're bulls. Okay. They're bulls. And uh, I can understand how they are. This is a pullback from uh, 118 off the, the lows in the yen were about 97 around the election. Not really. They spike down here around par. Okay. So here's your uh, looking at the daily of the yen. This is a bigger picture. I want to look at the weekly. Okay. So we had this big break last year, 2,500 pips, 25 handles. We rallied back to 118. Okay, that could have been a Fibonacci retracement. And if the equity bulls are right, maybe we are going to get a breakout over 114 and head up to test the 118 level or maybe 125. But I'm open to this being a possibility. And that is that from here, we have if we had equality of this decline in a correction, from here... This would take you down to 92, okay? So this is a pretty bearish environment here. But I'm thinking that at least we're going to get some type of rally back to about 112, uh, 113 from the 108 level. But look at this. And the bears would say, the equity bears would say, and for the bonds to get up to the gap, for this to happen, Yeah.
if I'm right, for the bonds to head up, uh, to have more lift left in them, uh, that's not going to be a 120 yen. That's going to be a much lower yen. So actually, I believe that we can uh, break all the way back to 96, but uh, do the right thing today and tomorrow will take care of itself. So this is my view short term, I think, from the 108 big round number around there. We get some type of rally. Uh, I was uh, negative the dollar last week and said I couldn't short the euro. So uh, euro yen could be a great candidate. And I just wanted to show the correlation between treasuries and the yen here. And perhaps treasuries, the TLT pulls back towards 120 and we get a rally in the end back to maybe 112, 113. So any questions? Okay, Dan agrees. Uh, Baki's looking for 106.84. Tolson's looking for 107.50. Okay, everyone, thanks for your uh, your input. But we're much we're closer to even the extreme level that Baki's talking about at 107, 106.84. So that could be done this week, and I'm just looking at maybe one more low setting up in some of the yen crosses, and then there could be something nice counter trend. <clears throat> okay, Blake. Those are my calls. The next one's yours. Hey, how's it going? All right, buddy. I hope everybody had a first of all. I hope everybody had a great long weekend. I know. I know it's still you know for a lot of European traders they're enjoying Easter Monday, so it's still pretty quiet out there. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, it's okay. pretty. Yeah. It, it's pretty quiet unless I'm yapping. <laughs> but go ahead, bro. No, I was. Uh, you know, t this is a. This is probably a one of the more important weeks in in, in currencies and and, um, and and it's not actually I, I don't want to say it's m most important one of the more important weeks in currencies do you, do you know the big event that's happening is next yeah, yeah not necessarily le pen but you yeah. know just the french elections um, the, with the french elections upcoming and we have the uh, the the um, more than likely we're going to move into the second round of voting um, based on based on um, you know, none of the candidates getting at least 50% in the first round. Uh, we're probably going to move into the second round. The, the problem is, is that it's a very, very close race. And, um, you know, everybody's thinking Marina Le Pen, but, you know, there's a, there's another candidate out there who is, who is against, uh, you know, the European Union as well. And that's, um, and I, you know, if I screw up the names, it's Melancon. And, and Melancon oh, is like also... I'm I'm huh. supporting uh, Pepe Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Melancon is an is is a been an up and comer um, candidate that uh, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something really quick. This is, um, in my opinion, the risk of of uh, of this um of this election here. Let me get over here to, um, you know, this is this is. It, this is in the telegraph. Okay, so you can see the uh, the, the polling in, in the first round right now, yeah. and this is something that we have to pay really close attention to. Um, and you can see that the numbers are all very very close. You know, between um, uh, you know a lot of these candidates. Um, if if we have Melancon and Le Pen, if, the, if the, either one of those two, um, uh, you know, become president we're gonna we're gonna have a bit of it we're gonna have a bit of an issue with the euro the euro is going to come under tremendous pressure now I would I actually played the euro uh, yen to the long side if if you guys um, for those of you that are Forex analytics subscribers last night uh, well I, I first of all I made a video called the week ahead video and 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 if you guys don't review that on um, on uh, over the weekends you should it's it's uh it's free it's on uh youtube on our youtube channel and uh we posted the video yesterday the video i talked about the euro yen in particular for a bounce and uh i was buying it last night and if you look at the euro yen even, even last night uh, uh sent out a um uh a chart and analysis as well 
on the euro yen as we approach the 618 retracement we were trading below 115 and um, the Asian update here I'll read it to you it says the euro yen hit the 618 retracement the hour hourly is very oversold you can see the the the, the uh, RSI was extremely oversold last night um, we have not seen a sign of a reversal yet but a possible garlic pattern may be setting up and you may want to look for a counter trend uh, uh, I meant to write trade while near 115 or just below and uh, we were trading at 114.87 and I actually picked up the euro yen last night below 115 and uh, I just sold it uh, at like 115.50 already this morning so I'm already out. Thanks, God, man. Thanks yeah it was a it was it was a good trade but and you could see this is a really and I and I even ran this by Nick uh, Nicola Duke uh, right. last night or, or not last night, but on Saturday, um, because you know I said, "Hey, do you see this as well?" She goes, "Yeah, I'm going to write about it as well." So she she wrote about um, the euro yen at the at the, at you know at the same time, uh, confirming my uh, my analysis that we were looking at a uh, at a harmonic pattern. Now we are getting a bounce, and you you can arguably say with this euro yen, it can bounce further. I mean, we we have a whole week you know ahead of. Ahead of this, uh, the, the the French elections here going into the first round, and um, you know, realistically, the euro yen could probably bounce to you know one seventeen, one eighteen, even. You could look at some of this previous yeah. support over here. I mean, it's it's realistic that we could we could do that. Um, Is the Gartley still valid? Uh, one of the charts you just showed, Blake, showed that the Gartley would be still be valid even if we traded one fourteen. Well, I you know I came all the way down here because this would be an eighty-eight percent retracement. Okay. So if you if you, if you see here, the, and harmonic patterns, I mean, as much as you want them to be perfect, um, they're just not going to be. I mean, the, the bottom line is you're you're going to have some variations in in, in some right. of the calculations. Very rarely are you going to find, oh yeah, this is a perfect fifty percent. Oh, this was a seven eight six, which this was. Oh, this is a hundred and sixty one percent extension, which would have been right. They're they're easy in the rear view mirror. Y yeah, exactly. Like I, I know, yeah. yeah, yeah. Here's a six one eight and the seven eight six oh. would have been right here. But you can see that you you're going to lose you're going to lose some of the the your accuracy if you go out to an eighty eight percent. So I would I would actually keep it valid all the way down to about 114 but I was trying to pick it up yesterday because I, I looked at a bigger 618 retracement that came in at 114.85 and or 86 and we actually hit that to a T I mean we literally in Asian trade last night hit it to a T and reversed so it, it couldn't have hit that 618 more perfect last night um, which you know it, that 618 was in between the 161 percent extension and, and right. the 786 right here and also the you know uh, you know down here if you went if it did go down all the way to 114 so you have to give a little bit of um, room for error when you're dealing with uh, harmonics just like anything I mean you know a technical analysis I mean it's not it's not an exact science and and, and you can make an exact science if you want to and trade it as an exact science, but you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities. I would say, realistically, like 80, 80 to 85 percent of the trades, if you just wait for perfection, you're 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 going to miss a lot of trades. Now, that's okay though. I mean, if 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 you want to wait for the perfect setup and only trade the perfect setup, if you have that kind of discipline, so be it. You know, congratulations. I mean, that that's that's good. I I don't. It, it's tough for somebody like myself who does this full time, uh, who's always looking for something to do. I have to give a little margin for error on trades, um, which allows me to you take take advantage of certain setups. You know, this is a perfect example of. Okay, it wasn't perfect, so I'm not going to take a full size position whenever something's not perfect. You know, I, I can I can arguably say, all right, I'm going to take a position here. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm going to be a little bit um, lenient in my in, in 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 my risk, and I'm going to allow a little bit more risk. Therefore, I just take a smaller position. And this was okay. exactly one of those cases. Now, that's a point I make to people, Blake. A lot of people don't let their trades breathe. 
they suffocate their trades with real tight stops, they end up being right to market, wrong to trade. How do you let your trades breathe? By reducing size and having wider stop losses or a mental stop? Uh, I, I, that, that, that's a, that, no, that's a great question. And in, in, unless it's like the perfect setup, and I know it's like precise, I don't get. I, I'll, I'll give it a lot of room because if it, if it's a precise setup, and I go, okay, this is perfect. There's no, like, you know, it's I'm good or bad at, from this point, and I believe in it. Yeah, it, it, and, it. And, and and but if it if it's like the perfect setup, I might, you know, I'm having a perfect entry. But there's, you know, a great chance that when I'm looking at something, I'm not seeing it at the perfect time. You, you know, the, as, as much as I sit in front of the computer, um, there's going to be some, you know, margin for error, whether it's on a calculation, whether it's, um, you know, it's counter trend, which is also a big issue. I mean, for me, when I'm trading counter trend, this is a harmonic pattern. This is a counter trend trade. I mean, any which way you slice it. I mean, it, this thing's come off from 123 to one, basically 115. I mean, that has come straight down. So. You know, whenever I'm counter trend or you know the the the, uh, the calculations are less than perfect, you have to give it some breathing room. And if you're going to give it some breathing room, you just have to take a smaller size position to allow that margin for error. And and you have to do it. I mean, and and, and if you don't, what what's going to happen? And this is you know typical of most traders in the beginning. You have the right idea, you have the right trade eventually your timing's off, and you end up losing money, yet the trade goes in your direction. I mean, if, if yeah. I asked all of our listeners, yeah. you know, out of the... the right the, the market, wrong all, the trade. Yeah, all the people that are listening right now, you know, the, the you know, and I ask, well, how many times has that happened to you? I think most people would say, oh, that happens to me quite a bit. You know, I'm, I'm, on, the, yeah, I, I'm on the right side. I, I, I knew it was going to happen. I took the trade. I, I took a loss. And it ended up going in my direction. That means that you are taking probably too big of a position and not giving a wide enough stop loss. And that's 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 a problem with the with many many traders. I mean, um, you know, it's 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 a typical issue. That's why I I tend to I know I'm right way more than I'm wrong. I know that. So therefore, and I know my timing's not perfect. So therefore, I have there to you go some breathing room. Yeah, the exception, uh, you know, the for me too. I'd uh, like uh, I'm prone to be early, Blake. So yeah. uh, you know, I would always put on a partial. But if you can't be wrong for a day, especially if you're a swing trader, how can you be right for a week? And and, and that's your average, at least a daily average trading range for the instrument you're trading. Yeah. And, uh, you know, once in a while you hit it on the button. You've had no drawdown. It's immediate gratification. But to, for me, that's the exception, not the rule. Yeah, it, you know, and I, I was looking at this, you know, this euro yen, and just it, it, and as an as a prime example, you know, I was entering yesterday below 115, you know, because I knew this the 618 was right there, but I knew I had to give it below 114. Okay, so if you take a position like this, Dale, and you go, okay, well, I'm going to enter here at 115, but I'm giving it a hundred pip risk. There you you have to figure out what that means to you on a dollar basis and a percentage basis if you take a loss. So for me, it's like, okay, well, I'm risking 15 grand. All right, well, fine, I'm going to risk 15 grand. And if I'm risking $15,000, how much percentage wise is that risking of, of, your, account. of your account or your capital you're trading? All right, well, you know, I've got a $10 million account. Well, you got a $10 million account, you're risking 15 grand. You're barely risking, you know, over a percent. Great. I can do that. You know, if you're if you're risking 15 grand and you have a $100,000 account, now you're risking 15% of your account. You should not be taking a position where you're risking $15,000. Especially no if you only have a $5,000 account. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, that, they, call those, uh, they call those deficits, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, you would be, you would, you would, uh, you'd, you'd, you'd move 30 pips and you'd have a margin call and then you'd, you'd be broke. You're so, gone. yeah, then you're done. So you, you have to, you have to think, you know, where's, where am I entering? What's my line in the sand? My line in the sand means where's my stop, basically, you know, because I, 
if if I if I entered here at 115 and I go okay, well I, my stop is at 114, but I'm I'm really going to get out if it if it trades below 114.50. Well, that's fine that you you say that, but do you have the discipline to get out then? Uh, you know, I don't know. I can't answer that question. But realistically, your stop is where your 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 ultimate line in the sand risk is. So I always calculate it from where my stop is. All right. Well, I'm risking below 114. I'm risking 100 pips. What is that? What what does that dollar amount come to if I'm if I'm wrong? And what percentage of my account is that risk? And you have to do that calculation on any trade that you do because you. You know, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're like, oh, I got, you know, I risked 5% of my account on this trade, I risked 3% on my account on this trade, and on this trade I risk another 4%. Well, now, now you're down 12% in three trades because you got three trades in a row wrong. Now you got a serious problem, a serious hole to, to, to get yourself out of. You know, I don't like to risk more than 1% of my account in any one trade. All right, so, and you can use that as a benchmark that doesn't mean that that risk reward is going to be right for you. That's what's right for me. But that that maybe gives you an idea of how I approach the market, which doesn't make it what I do correct. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't ever try to profess to any of our traders out there that I do it the right way and you're doing it the wrong way. No, it's just the way I do it, and whether it fits what you're trying to do or or not. Hopefully, it, hopefully you can learn something from it. But um, well, you no, know, I think, like uh, Jack Schwager, I interviewed a few times. Oh, and yeah. I, I, and I asked him, Jack, you know, what's the most important thing for traders to know? And he said to find a trading style that fits your personality. Yeah. So, you know, everyone has a different personality, so that's really a self-discovery effort and process that goes on with each individual trader. Um, you can't be somebody else. You have to learn to be you. And, you know, maybe that uh, you're more inclined to be a day trader because of that. Maybe you're more inclined to be a position trader, set and forget. But you have to try different methods to see uh, what fits you, uh, what, uh, you know, where do you feel less pressure and less emotional. So yeah. you know, that, that, that's a, uh, a self-discovery thing. No one could tell you how to be. You have to discover that for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, 100% agree. And, and, you know, hopefully you can just take nuggets from whether it's myself or any other experts that you hear, any other professional traders that you hear on this webinar that Dale brings in as an, inter as an interview. You know, you take little nuggets from bits and pieces, and hopefully you can patch something together that really makes sense based on, what you do personally. Hey, I want to cover a couple a couple last things, Dale, uh, before you go on your, your first break. Um, you know, gold had a, a really key rejection. I was long gold uh, for the last couple of days. I bought gold at, on this breakout above uh, 1260, tw I actually owned it at 1265 or something like that. I sold it last night at 1292, 1292, 1293, so right, right, right I, I sold it early. I did not get the, the, the high tick. I sold it like right here, like on this spike uh, right as we open, the pit open. Mm -hmm. I, I sold it at like 1292. You can see we went to 1295, and then we've been reversing ever since. We're, we're setting up a daily reversal candle. This is a shooting star for those yeah. of you that aren't familiar with it. It's early, so I wouldn't um, get too, you know, too excited about what you're seeing yet. Uh, but I will tell you that we rejected a big, big downtrend line. Um, and this is uh, this is uh, a, a big this is a big reversal here. Uh, if if I had to if I had to guesstimate, if there's one thing that will break us out of that trend line, it's going to be the French elections coming up the next week or two. All and right. a weaker uh, and the euro surging because Le Pen doesn't win. Well, no, the, no, well, well. Here's the thing, you know, if 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 Le Pen or uh, Malencon win, uh, the euro will go to hell in a handbasket. You know, the euro will probably trade below parity, and and gold will still spike up. Um, because okay, I got it. because it's it's a fear trade. So, right. um, if there's anything that's going to push us out of the uh, above this multi-year trend line, I think it's that French election. Now, um, here I'm going to. This is moving a little slow here. Here's a, here's a weak chart so you guys can see. 
we, we knocked our head right up against resistance. Like I said, I sold gold last night. I exited. I did not short it. I just exited my long from, um, and if you guys have been following me on Twitter, I've been kind of harassing all the gold shorts saying that you guys are stuck on the wrong side. You know, yeah. you, know you, 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 the, the gold, gold shorts were caught wrong sided last week. Easy. It was an easy trade. We broke above the 200 day moving average. We cleared this resistance right here. That was a 30 point spike that hopefully, you know, some of you caught last week. We hit resistance. No, no way I'm going to be long, you know, without us dropping a nuke on North Korea this week or North Korea trying to drop a nuke somewhere else. Uh, since that didn't happen, uh, there was no, there's no reason to be long gold at this point. Um, so I exited, you know, first thing uh, last night when, when, when the market opened. Uh, I was glad because I, I thought, I, th I was actually thinking because the situation in North Korea did not escalate uh, over the weekend, I actually thought gold was going to open up down you know, five bucks. And I had a pretty sizable position in gold. So, I, you know, we closed here at uh, 1287. I was surprised when we, we gapped up here at 1290. Um, so I sold into that strength because I thought we were going to, I thought we were going to open up like at 1280. Um, and we didn't. So I was really happy about that. But what's that um, purple line uh, uh, coming in? Uh, okay. This, that's the big trend yeah, line. I that's, see. That, okay. that's, that, that's that major trend line. So, okay. uh, and, and, and here's, here's the thing, guys. If we break above 1300 in gold, if we break above 1300 in gold over the course of the next week or two, that's a fear trade. That means, you know, there's probably the stock market's coming on under a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, it could be because of the French elections. It could be because of North Korea and things are escalating. Maybe, you know, China gets into the mix. Who knows? You know, because China could very easily, um, you know, stir things up. Uh, as as uh, as North Korea is really only only uh, ally at this point, but whatever the reason is, if if gold you know surges above thirteen hundred, we do have some. We're going to be in a scary time, so you got to think about that as well. Um, so there's gold. Uh, the euro dollar, I, I, I'm not really doing anything anything with. I, I wanted to sell into that strength today, so I did. I sold the euro yen into strength and took profits this morning. Um, the pound dollar, by the way, you got to watch the cable. Uh, I am long cable on the crosses. I've got pound Canadian, pound Aussie, pound New Zealand. But you know what? Um, we have a nice little triangle setting up here. We're at channel resistance right now. If the pound can break above 126, we're going to test the underside of this, uh, this previous support, which will be 128. If we break above 128, that would be extremely bullish for the cable. Uh, how can the pound move up and the euro not? Well, the the easy answer there is the euro pound. I mean, the, the right. euro pound for the yeah. I mean, th this is the this is the big head and shoulder. I mean, look, we got double shoulders on the left, double shoulders on the right, double headed. Um, you know, we break through eighty four pence, and the euro pound's probably going to see the mid seventy pence level again. Again, how can that all happen? Well, if you think about the French elections, if you get Le Pen or Malencon in a, as as a front runner. Um, and, and you get like, you know, you get, you know, Macron, um, you know, to, to, to drop out of the race or, or Hammond, you know, that, that, that just narrows the field. And if you have Le Pen and Melicon in, well, you can, you, you'll know that the Euro is going to be in for a very tough time moving forward as they, as, as France, you know, wants to move out of the Eurozone. If that happens, then the Euro pound could very easily be below 80 pence. Now, if that happens, that means the pound dollar is going to be trading at 128 to 135 as people scurry out of the pound or out of the euro and into the pound. The, these are all realistic expectations and realistic scenarios. So that's why I bring them up because I think the next two weeks are going to be a huge, huge event risk for these European currencies. So if you guys think that the market's really choppy right now and there's not a whole lot to do, don't worry. You're there's right. Gonna, there's going to be You're a right. lot to do in the next week or two. There's going to be so, a lot to do. So I remember a lot of your pound crosses last week, Blake. You talked about being near a decision point. They were hanging right at uh, trend line support, and you had to make a decision where you're going to stay. And I quoted you, uh, one of the hardest things to do when you're up 400 pips on a trade is 
not to take it but to be looking to add so what how did you handle this trend line break you, you know what the trend line break that did and i'm glad you asked like on the pound new zealand here you notice how we're still making and i'll draw it out for you um using my using our pen that just us as uh presenters and organizers have the you know the we're still making the higher lows yeah, we're still making higher lows, so I'm not really I, I'm I'm I don't like how we broke through that trend line, but on the at the same token, I like where we're still making higher lows. So um, I didn't add, and I and I would I think that, um, and I was thinking you know kind of looking ahead, in order for me to really you know be adding to any cable longs, I've got to see the pound really moving higher against other things too, like. You know, I want to see the pound dollar breaking higher. I want to see the euro pound breaking lower. And then, if that's the case, then then I would I would say, oh, well, then uh, you know, maybe I need to buy more pound Aussie, or maybe I need to buy more pound Canadian, or maybe I need to buy more pound New Zealand. You know, so uh, I I haven't added, but uh, I'm still in. I'm still. All right. Well, you, yeah. If I if I could tell you just one thing that I see is that markets normally don't top with prices and momentum confirming like you had uh, before the recent sell-off. Uh, that's a pretty high reading on the RSI. What is it, about 80 or something like that? On oh, like pound, there. pound New Zealand here? Yeah, yeah. On that's the hour, yeah, it, was, it was really high, and, and, and it was like it was like at a, uh, 79 or no, 77. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was 78. It was really high, and I, I knew that was a risk, uh, with that false breakout, but I'm not, I haven't given up hope on the pound New Zealand just yet. So. Well, what I'm saying is the fact that the price and momentum confirmed is actually kind of a bullish sign. Mm. Because bar, you know, normally you're going to have some kind of non-confirmation at an important high I, rather, yes. than a, rather than a confirmed high. I see what you're talking about. Yes, if we would have hit new highs and RSI wasn't up there, right. yes, then that, that would have yeah. been more of a problem. That That is correct. Okay. Well, Dale, um, I... No, you want to take a break, and I just wanted to wish everybody a good week. Um, I probably will be popping in the web. I I, I pop in the webinar every once in a while uh, uh, to to just especially if I got something to say. Like I said, like I said today, I wanted to really talk about this week and the French elections upcoming. Really watch gold. Um, keep an eye on the euro and uh, and and the pound. Um, those are those are all on the radar for me. You, you guys can also see that the yen is very strong, despite the stock market holding up. Which that that would worry me if I was uh, if I was long yen pairs. Uh, I did take the euro yen long last night, but I already got out, so I already took my profits and I'm gone. Um, I hope you guys have a great trading week. I will I will jump on throughout the course of the week uh, from time to time. Nothing scheduled in particular because I know you have um, other. Uh, other interviews coming on this week, and I just yeah. wanted to give you my two cents. So thank you so Adam much Button, for uh, Adam Button today. Adam's top shelf man. So. Oh, oh, God, Adam Button from Forex Live. Yeah, Adam's going to be with us in about twenty minutes. Oh my God, that well, y y y one of the he, best. In the I, I mean, his, his seasonal work is great, and he's a news trader. So I yeah. look, plus plus now he's the last year he became a married man with a baby so i want to see how marriage has affected him <laughs> that's i'm sure it's done a lot <laughs> all right, all right. Buddy. you got, you guys have a good one and thanks dale thanks everybody i'm going to i'm going to turn you back over to dale here and make sure you guys stick around for for uh for adam button with uh with forex live because uh those guys are top shelf they're top of the best in the business thank you blake all right thanks dale thanks everyone okay. Okay, everyone. I, I like Blake said. Uh, you know, I may want to take a just a quick little break here. I, I, for those of you that uh, are you guys familiar with the phone app that you could get for FA? So you know, Blake is on the go. He's a busy family man. In fact, most of the team they have kids or dogs or boyfriends or wives or husbands, and they're not always in their office. And I think this is a, a great tool to always be in touch. If Blake sees something change, or Grega, or Nick, or Steve, uh, Stelios, you're going to see this pushed out on your iPhone, your Android. So let's just look at this, and I'll be back in five, and then Adam should be with us here in a Hey Dale, can't hear you. Just F FYI. 
Got it. That, All right, Tolson. Uh, okay, Tolson. Uh, yeah, I muted myself and then forgot to unmute. You ever do that, Blake? Yep. Mute yourself and then forget. Yep. <laughs> yep. Anyway, I've done it many times. Many times. All right. Anyway, uh, Tolson, uh, that was your face award. Okay, for a great short under that 50 level. Congratulations. If you didn't know who won that face award, that's you. And we have about 10 minutes if you want to do any screen shares. And I just want to remind everyone on Aussie Kiwi from the test of the breakout last week where it held that uh, the fail safe stop is a close only stop. We get a candle close even on an hourly under 107.50 it would be time to reassess, maybe even reverse for a move back here. But as long as we're holding, I'm looking for a breakout over this downtrend and eventually heading up to here. So give me a why if you're with me on how to protect yourself if you're long. Uh, we always have to manage our risk. The difference between pros and amateurs, our pros know how to lose so they have money left to be right with. Okay. And uh, don't get too elated over your winners, and then you won't become too despondent over your losers. Every trade is just another trade. Write that down if you're an emotional person like me. Every trade is just another trade. Okay, so if you have some screen shares you want to share, now's a good time to do it. Ronit, thanks for dropping by. Chris, LOL, is that you, Chris Laurie? Because if it is, Chris, I want to ask you if uh, you'd be interested in doing an interview with me. Walter Brown is here to hear uh, Adam. Adam's going to be in here. So any any views you want to show, guys? Okay, so you can just post it. Here's Hardyanto. I, I think it's going to be Euro Yen. Hardyanto, is that true? Arianto is an excellent trader. I've gotten to know him over the last several months. I've watched his work. Uh, he has a pretty good hit rate, actually a very good hit rate. So we're fortunate to have him be part of the base community here. Let me try it again, buddy. Right, I'm just going to have to do it by hand. Try it again. Stand by for Adam Button at Forex Live. I really like to have Adam on at the beginning of the month because the seasonal work is excellent. Here's Hardianto's look. Euro Yen. Okay. He's really bullish. Okay. So uh, to him, it looks like it completed. We're not going to see 114. So. Uh, I know that um, Luca and many other guys were looking to buy Euro Yen around the 115 level. And Hardianto went for it. He's looking for huge moves back above the highs. So it's not going to happen in 24 hours, but uh, this is a major resistance point for him. So we'll see if there's another dip, a possibility to buy it. So if Euro Yen has bottom, And we're only up 35. It's just beginning, right? Here's your weekly. Let's see if we could find an entry level, perhaps on the 15-minute. Sometimes I go to the 15-minute to find entries. So if we get a pullback back down towards 1530, 1520, maybe a good entry, risking this 1480 low. So when you look at a 15-minute chart, it looks like you're late, right? But if you look at a daily, it's just starting, even a four-hour. And the four-hour, the reason that I think there still could be another shot to buy it is why. What makes me think that there's a possibility of one more low coming in Euro yen? Anyone know? Anyone know why? I have my cursor on it. We did diverge from back here, but the four hour,
Yeah, confirm load. Hi, hi, Jerry. How are you? You can't see the screen. Guillermo, I have Euro Yen up. Everyone else see the screen? You may want to log out. Come back in, Guillermo. Euro yen below 16.30. So 16.30 is a big number for Ronit. Ronit's a super dollar bull. He has analogs that, you know, take the dollar to levels at, uh, you know, 130, 140. Cad yen even, Cad yen actually looks a little better. But I think that uh, there could be one more shot down in Canada. But see how we are, the, the difference in the RSI structure is a little better here. We've already diverged on the one hour. Four is close, but I'd be looking to get long. The only thing that holds me back is that uh, the Canadian did not complete. You know, we, we took profits on Canada here but we could still head back down to 32 or even 31. That could set up a better entry. 80 and a half on CAD yen. Yeah, I think that could be one of the stronger ones. So good eye on that. Another 100 pips is what Dan's looking for. So 100 pips lower, that would kind of tie in with uh, Canada not having bottomed. I think we could go to 32, maybe 31 in Canada. 140 is a conservative target, according to Ronit. Here's a look by Walter. He trades at Admiral. So, you know my friends over there. Vin Diesel, which is an ad. And Chris Svorchek. Let's see what you got here. And Adam's going to be with us after this. I'm going to go to, going to go to Adam. Okay, looking for right here, 80.50. Nice look on CAD Yen, looking for one more low. Thank you, Walter. Tarant yeah, Tarantula. Sam, everyone else could see my screen, right? Everyone sees uh, the look provided by Walter, Walter Brown. Okay. I'm just going to take one more quick break, and then we're going to start the interview with Adam. Looking forward. I haven't talked to Adam in a while. To the presenter, so you can turn on your mic and share your screen, and as soon as you do that, we could get started. You got it, buddy? Okay. Hi, Dale. Hey, Adam. How are you? I hear you. I'm doing well. Uh, okay, you could share. You, you could share your screen too, buddy. So uh, you're uh, the presenter. Okay. I'm the organizer. So uh, you okay. probably haven't, you haven't used the go-to-meeting room in a while. So I see you. Let's make sure everyone sees Adam. Everyone see him. Should be your screen. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, they see you. Okay, Adam. So, God, it's been a year or so since I've talked to you, and you, and yeah. it looks like, and it looks like your uh, new life is uh, serving you well. You look, 
uh, well rested, uh, although you have a young child and, and a wife and everything. Uh, uh, it's my hope that uh, your new life has made you even a greater trader than you were before. Have you noticed a difference? Have you noticed a difference? No, definitely less sleep. I mean, you got to do it on less sleep with a young family. That's uh, that's for sure. No, I, I mean everything's going great. Um, you know, no complaints at all. I'm actually just, just building a new office here, so it's not quite ready, but uh, slowly piecing it together. And I'm actually I've got this like sit stand desk now that I'm, that I'm trying out. So we'll see how that goes. But stand up if I feel a little more productive and a little more energetic. So. Uh, and, and, and there was some type of major development with Forex Live, and what was it? Is it Forex Magnets or a company out of Israel? Why don't you tell us about that? Oh, sure. Um, I mean, I, I still run the site, but I, I was uh, we, we went into a partnership with them, and and uh, that they they are able to take all the business development, all the technical development, and, and just let us focus on uh, Forex analysis now, which is. You know what I really like. I, I was spending far too much of my time over the last few years on website development and and business development. So, uh, wasn't something I was I was super passionate about. Uh, whereas the market is 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 just for me. It's everything. And now it's 100 percent of my focus. Um, I'm doing analysis and content and and you know sorting out what's going on, which is really more than a full time job as it is. Uh, so yeah, we went into a partnership with them and. And uh, they handle that now, and it, it's freed me up to do what I love. So I, I couldn't be happier. Congratulations on that, my trading warrior brother. And I also wanted to um, ask you. I know I used to have you on when we did this at FX Street at the beginning of the month because your seasonal work was so strong. So I know we're mid-April tax day here in the U.S. coming up, but. Uh, how did the April seasonals work out from what you saw at the beginning of the month? Uh, what Now that we've covered your family, we could talk about pips and talk about instruments. And, you know, I know uh, you, the position that you took being a married man and a father is a leap. It's a long-term uh, option that uh, doesn't decay. It's the rest of your life type of position. So that's your long-term stuff. What are you seeing in here? with all the geo stuff going on and I haven't talked to you since the US election and now we have France coming up here uh, why don't we start there uh, what are you seeing or anticipating with the French elections and the impact on different markets sure yeah I mean to take it back the seasonals haven't been as strong this year and the election threw a bit of a kink into it some things worked really well gold at the start of the year uh, really took off, and and since then, if March was it was a poor month for the seasonal patterns, um, uh, you know, it was a strong time for the euro, and it, it hasn't worked out. And, it, and part of that goes to the French election as well, which has been a headwind. Um, and you know, that's coming up uh, less than two weeks away. Uh, you know, the, 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 this this four way race has really opened up, and and what you know, we get these daily polls on on the French election, and it always shows the same thing. And what what I find strange about the election polls is there's so little variation. Um, you'll see maybe a half percentage point move between uh, between Macron and Le Pen and anyone else there over a day. Whereas if if you remember almost any other election or any other poll, you'll see two or three points percentage points of variance. And that's just the standard deviation. That's the that's the margin of error in the poll. And I, I find it strange that France has it. It's so low in a lot of the French polls. But the other thing we're watching is is the high level of undecideds. There's still a lot of undecideds in the French election polls. So you see these polls, and I, I think the market's become a little bit complacent uh, because the polls have been so complacent or they move so slowly. But there are still a high level of undecideds. And so the the ri euro risks may be higher. And the market's anticipating. But that said, Le Pen, even if she can get through to the second round, is is this distant um, uh, favor, or distant chance of winning the thing because polling head to head against almost anyone, she's so far behind. But but the big story, I guess, coming into the final two weeks is Melanson and the, it, his sort of rise. It, it seems to have topped out a little bit. But who are Le Pen, Melanson? Um, second round, that would be, um, well, like Schäuble said, uh, the German finance minister, he said that would be a nightmare scenario. So it would be yeah. a, a so, big You know, polling, polling is, uh, you're saying you're not getting much from the polls. 
Well, even though when there's been variants, polling has really taken a hit in the last 12 months, hasn't it, buddy? Starting with Brexit and then the polls being wrong about Trump. And here we are again with the polls. Uh, what do you think is changing? Uh, you know, in the U.S. election, I think a lot of people were tight-lipped about their support of Trump and it didn't show up in the poll because they were, uh, I don't know, uh, just hesitant to share that they would be in favor of such a controversial figure. Um, and maybe the same thing is happening in France that, you know, uh, you know, I'm still having arguments with uh, my wife is more conservative than me. And, uh, you know, it uh, it made for uh, a pretty tense Thanksgiving period among even families if you had different political views. So you think that could be part of it because people aren't actively participating in the polls or like maybe they're telling uh, the pollsters uh, I'm undecided when they really are decided because they don't want to share it. Yeah, and I think that's part of it. I mean, the electoral, the electoral college was was a bit. I mean, Hillary did win the win the popular vote, but if you if you look at polling in a state like Florida, it, it goes to your point. People were just quiet about it, and I think, you know, it can go both ways with the undecideds. I think a lot of people are undecided till the end, and they swing. There are these big, heavy swings at the end of campaigns, and people are waiting right until the last minute to decide. Um, and that may be what's happening in France. And, and these polls as well, I think, have given both candidates and voters a false sense of security. Uh, turnout was a big factor in, in the American election. I mean, so many polls were showing Hillary ahead and not emphasizing the undecideds. And then people didn't show up on election yeah. day and were supporting. Yeah, I think the lowest voter turnout in 40 years or 70 years, people just not knowing what to do, throwing off their... It's kind of a dangerous thing when people begin to decide to uh, be discouraged about the political process and not voicing their their votes. Right. And I think it's just different levels. I mean, I think before you had these models where everybody's engagement level was sort of similar. But then if you look at Trump supporters, for instance, they were so engaged. And, and the model might have shown them 70% likely to show up and vote, where in reality they were like 95% likely to show because they became so engaged whether by the internet or 24 7 news um, um the, the, the models of who is showing up to vote i think uh, is part of the issue and, and so france you know i think once again there's this complacency and you think it's bizarre after brexit after trump there's a lot of other elections as well that haven't followed the polls uh, but i i see it again in the markets and complacency here um, but so again, what, what do you do, right? What do you do as an analyst? You look at the polls. You, ha you kind of have to live and die by them because you can't just... Maybe we should look at, them. Adam, maybe we should look at Euro Pound being a better indicator than the polls. You know, it, uh, we're, we're only around 60, 70 pips away from a major breakdown. A lot of people looking at a head and shoulders formation. Maybe that's a catalyst to finally get a breakdown. Uh, and cable has been favored over this euro uncertainty uh, based upon what euro pound has been doing. Do um, you have a view on cable itself, uh, which has been pretty buoyant since the breakdown under, you know, the 08 lows of 135? Um, a lot of people I know are still pretty constructive on the pound. There's a few people that still think that we could trade maybe 115. Do you have a view on cable and, uh, and EG? Yeah, I mean, cable's very strong today, and I like the upside. I think the upside, it, it can come any time. I mean, Article 50, for me, um, there's been a lot of shorts piling in. If you look at the CFTC numbers just from Friday, um, they they were showing, again, net, net cable shorts at a record high. Uh, and a lot of that money is is underwater or, or right at, you know, the underwater point here now. And if you can get that squeeze up over 128, then I think cable can really start to take off and, and you start to see euro sterling um, hit the skids at the same time. I think the market's just looking for a catalyst here, be it some good news from the Bank of England or, or the pound, because I really don't see the potential for a lot of bad news. Sure, negotiations on Brexit will go up and down and it'll stretch out for two plus years. But what's the catalyst for, for cable to go lower from here, especially in something from the euro? Um, and then the other big story with euro is that inflation really isn't materializing. And I think that's the next big theme in the markets. 
So uh, there, therefore, because inflation is not manifesting, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying that the ECB could be on the verge of perhaps even a tightening. So you don't see that in the cards. No, I, I don't. Um, and, and I think it's everywhere. Um, there was this this few months where the uh, UK ECB is going to type, but Draghi has done well to tamp it down that enthusiasm. Um, so the euro downside might be a little bit less. With the US dollar the downside, um, I, I think, can be can be a bit more there. Um, but in general, I think it is probably good just in, for risk assets as the Fed moves the silence. We say, oh, Okay, I mean it's the balance, though, right? You have growth also is going to falter along with weak inflation, um, and I think the the future it just ends up looking a lot like the past, and we muddle along, and and this big takeoff isn't happening, and and what's the disappointment there? Well, it's probably an easier call on something like yen strength or or volatility. Um, okay, yeah, we we had a little pickup in vol uh, last week from eleven to sixteen, and. Uh, I want to go to the end since it really is the linchpin for a lot of markets. You know, it moves counter to gold. I know you're focused on what's happening in gold. We're testing some major, major resistance. It could be a breakout there. And uh, a lot of people are looking for spots to buy yen, uh, starting to look at some yen crosses. Uh, you have a view on what's happening here in U.S. dollar yen? Yeah, I mean, this is, a, it looks like a big breakdown already, and you have a little bit of support. Um, I'm down just below 108 at the 61.8% uh, retracement of the move since the election. And that's, to me, that's the last chance for the dollar yen bulls. Um, you know, the, the stock market looks a little bit healthier today, but if that comes unhinged, I think this disappointment trade is, is starting to come together um, seasonally as well. You get into May, you get into the summer months, it, it starts to be a weaker seasonal period. Um, you think I, sell in May and go away is going to work in equities this year, Adam? I mean, it's, it has been a poor trade, but it, it is setting up pretty nicely. If you look at the you know, lower highs in the stock market, you're starting to get some lower lows. I mean, the close on Friday was the worst since uh, middle of February. Not a lot of support there. And, you know, geopolitics, sure, we're shrugging it off a little bit today, but, you know, there's a lot more uncertainty. Um, in terms of the, the bonds falling, and and but really it comes back to the economy. Empire Fed today was weak. Uh, retail sales were weak on Friday. Nobody's putting up the numbers since the confidence that have have turned into you know this business investment, this actual growth in the economy. Q1 is going to be weak um, in a lot of places. So, so you, know, you think yen could trade subpar, sub 100 in the yeah, coming months? Yeah, you get back down to that, that 103 sort of level first. I mean, then you start to run into the Bank of Japan once you get close to 100 on um, yeah. the jawboning. But really, they, it's not like they turned hawkish and can go back. Like, there, there's not a lot more they can do besides threat intervention and that sort of thing. And, and after the, uh, I don't know if you read, the Treasury report came out on Friday I and mean, Japan was in there again. I think, don't think Trump is going to take very kindly to anyone who's intervening. Uh, so you can get back down below 100. Um, that's definitely going to set off some alarm bells at the Bank of Japan. But I think the first trade is just to get it there and retrace the election rally um, mm -hmm. and keep an eye on stocks. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it, I mean, gold, gold, gold's almost there. It's almost retraced from the high of the election day here in the U.S. I think it was 100 in the end. So a lot of things are, uh, the Dixie would have to get back down to about 96, I believe. Uh, that was uh, pre-election levels. Uh, a lot of people are having trouble trading your native currency, Adam. Uh, uh, the loony has really been a chop fest. Uh, you have a view on that? I was thinking maybe one more break to 31. And uh, do you think that the correlation between the loony and oil has uh, become more of a disconnect than a connect here? Yeah, people get a little bit in love with that connection, and then what happens is you get a, a range, and then it doesn't matter anymore until you know the, the range breaks in oil. Um, it, and it sort of did, but but CAD just wants to see a little bit more conviction. It was right to be a, a hesitant. Now we're back up to 53. Uh, but it'll, it, on the technicals, sometimes it'll break your heart, and sometimes it, you know it's the retirement trade. 
seems to break big levels and then run. And then when it when it range trades and breaks out, it's, it fakes you out a lot of the time. You have a longer term view. Uh, you know, I guess uh, the uh, the two camps are you know 120 or 150. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm on the bullish side. I think the the numbers can't. I mean, you can't. These numbers have been super strong from Canada all year long. Very strong employment, employment, great growth numbers, um, and the Bank of Canada has leaned against it. And I think if, if the Bank of Canada were a little bit more optimistic or constructive, you'd be down in the 123, 124 level, or even 120 right now. And and they could justifiably do that, but I think they want to keep the Canadian dollar weak. But the real wild card is housing. It's out of control. I don't know if outside of Canada you get the headlines, but this whole Toronto area, which is a big part of the country, is up 33% year over year. Um, and that's after many years of 8, 10, 12% growth. Um, I mean, the tiny little houses out in the suburbs in Toronto are selling for 1.2, 1.4. Um, it's, and it's spread to the surrounding, like, you know, two, three hundred miles away from Toronto, it's the same thing, and it, it's really just out. It, of is it size. foreign money? Is it? You know, there's been a lot of flight capital from China, although now their capital controls seem to be uh, a little bit uh, more effective. I know that when I sold my house a few years ago, it was you know Chinese coming in with suitcases full of cash. Yeah, it's and that, that's that. absolutely it. And I think. I, you know, at some some point, that's that's the main factor. You know, urbanization. Everybody's living in the cities, so on and so forth. But at some point, it's just become a mania. Whereas anyone who's buying at any price thinks the price is going up. Um, it's been you know twenty years since Canada's had twenty five years since Canada's had any kind of house price correction. And I just think it, it's just nonsense at this point, where you have most of the people in this country thinking the prices are going to go up forever. Or if you know there's a little five percent dip, that's all it can take, and and it, it's just really, really way beyond sustainable. But people have been saying this since 2009, and and you know I've been one to to sort of lean against it and say you know it can go up farther and, and than you think. But we're really at the parabolic point here now. We have a bunch of ten percent years, and then it just goes straight up. I mean it's like a like an Amazon chart here right now. It's out of control, and that will somehow bust. I mean, there's a lot of talk about uh, rent controls and, and different taxes yeah. coming in right now, and that's what will bust it. And that's the sort of thing that can put dollar cat up to, like they can start a banking crisis um, and, and get it up to 150. But the timing on that is it's really just impossible to pick when a bubble will pop. And so I think for now, the better trade is to be long dollar cat. Because if housing were to bust, it would be so epic and so long that you'd have plenty of time, I think, to get into that trade. Um, but barring that, I'd like the Canadian dollar. Okay, Adam. So uh, when we talk about what you do at Forex Live, your content, and uh, people can follow you on Twitter and go to Forex Live, and um, you have any feeling about what happened? I know the peso suffered uh, quite a bit going into the election. Some people looking at a uh, potential low developing in peso. Uh, uh, you have any view on U.S. dollar mex? Yeah, I, I like it as well. I mean, it's, it, the, the bark has been a lot worse than the bite in the new administration so far. I think if you look at the real options in terms of NAFTA, there's not that much they can do um, to Mexico without getting into the World Trade Organization trouble. Um, you know, Mexico has been beaten down so bad. I mean, I've been saying for years that the best investment in the entire world is Acapulco real estate because you can get it for nothing. It's on the beach. I mean, it's a bloodbath down there. But one day it will it will clean up. Um, but I, I, I like Mexico. I like the trade. If you look at that chart, it looks strong. I don't know if today is really the day to get involved, um, but any round, I think, of, of, of dollar Mexican strength is something to lean into um, because this has probably been the top. I mean, there was a real fear trade there, and, and yeah. we're at the end of it now. Well, you know, eloquent as usual, Adam, and a, a great presentation, and uh, I want to thank you for taking time to come into face and Blake thanks you and the whole team for you coming by to share your views. Um, 
I hope that perhaps we could do this maybe uh, at the beginning of the month so you could share your seasonal work. I'm sure it's going to kick in again. And uh, may pits and blessings chase your you and your family down and your company down and the coming days, and I really enjoyed us getting back together again. Yeah, yeah, no, we got to get back into the rhythm here. We're a little bit out of the rhythm, me and you, Dale. So uh, yeah, yeah, we're well, back together. We're getting a little bit of a present. Yeah, yeah, pr yeah, practice, practice makes perfect. And uh, I was uh, uh, very excited to talk to you again. It's great to be doing interviews again and talking to yeah. top guns like Adam Button. So thanks again for your time, brother. And, Risen from uh, the dead. Just in, in the Easter spirit here. I yeah. gotta give a shout out to this the hockey playoffs here in Canada and I have my Boston Bruins are my team, which is American team. So Okay, know, buddy. One, well, one sure thing bad on the Bruins. All right, well all I could say is Adam, every time I talk to you it's a hat trick. <laughs> hey, all right. All man. right, buddy. So uh, thanks so much, Adam. Great to talk to you again and uh, good hunting and let's do it again maybe at the beginning of next month and we could talk seasonals. Let's do it. Thanks, All Dale. Right, Have a great week. Thank you very much. Adam Button, you can follow Adam at Adam. Follow him at FX underline button or at Forex Live. So a great interview. Okay, thank you, Jess. The webcam slows down the connection. So that's it for me, everybody. I hope everyone had a great session. Lots of ideas from Forex Stop Hunter, which is me. Uh, we have some nice setups. Blake, uh, you know, I think that this content that we present every day is tough to beat. So uh, thanks for your attention. You know, everyone's most precious currency is time. Thanks for spending some time with us here every day. And it's our mission to edify and build up traders every day. I hope it's adding value to what you want to accomplish as a market participant. So see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Europe should be back in full swing tomorrow. And you could count on Forex Analytics being in full swing every time I hit the Start Broadcast button. So don't just count your pips, count your blessings. You're very welcome, Calvin. Welcome, Kevin, Oscar, Forex, Gal, Ronan. Nice to see you in here. Jess, thank you. You're welcome, Hardy, Anto, and Jerry, and Gary. I'll see you tomorrow. Adios. You're welcome, Russell.